What's going on YouTube? GeoSnow right here. So in today's video I have some important news about a new kernel vulnerability that has been released for iOS 13.3.1. We're going to also establish whether this can be used of course outside of the sandbox and also if it can be used for a jailbreak. Now just a couple of days ago Simo, a developer in here, posted quote a POC or proof of concept trigger for my CVE 2020-9768. This is basically a vulnerability. It says in here Apple description is not accurate. This is a kernel bug in Apple JPEG driver user client. Now, as he says in here, this is basically CVE 2020-9768, which means that this one is also compatible with iOS 13.3, 13.3.1 and lower. It has been patched on iOS 13.4 and he posted this in here, which is basically the source code for this. So let me actually make this a little bit bigger for you so you can see. Now you can see that he also says that it's been uh, reported back on January 19, 2020 and it was fixed on iOS 13.4. And of course it says in here, Apple JPEG driver user client, Mac port use after free, type confusion via race condition. Now he posted everything in here and as you can see the source code is available so anybody can test it but since he said in here that this is a kernel vulnerability, a kernel bug, of course many people ask me if this can be used for an iOS 13.3.1 jailbreak. So for example for updating the uncovered jailbreak in here which currently only supports iOS 13.3 and lower because this one is based on the time waste exploit for iOS 13 but of course the time waste exploit created by Jake James is not compatible with iOS 13.3.1. Though it's important to understand that this is not a TFP0 kernel exploit. Jake James also asked Simo in here whether this is accessible from the sandbox because if it is it makes the vulnerability so much better and of course so much more useful and of course Simo replied that yes. So this is actually good because this means that the vulnerability is powerful enough that a normal sandboxed application that runs in user land will be able to treat trigger the vulnerability in here by of course running this code. Now if you're not into iOS jailbreak development you probably don't know about the sandbox but it suffices to know that it actually protects very well the system and your application that runs in user land is not actually able to do much of a thing that would damage the system. Everything is actually controlled, your permissions to do things are actually given by the sandbox. So for example if the sandbox says that you cannot actually run a specific function then you can't and your application crashes or of course triggers an exception. And of course the sandbox also blocks you from accessing files and writing files to various locations. It only allows you to read and write to your particular folder and stuff like that. So the sandbox is actually a very very powerful thing which of course if you want to build a jailbreak you have to actually bypass. But it seems that according to Simon here the vulnerability he has and the bug that he posted in here is accessible from the sandbox. So you don't need to bypass sandbox before triggering this bug which is already kind of big in itself because of course as I said the whole purpose of the sandbox is to protect against this kind of stuff. But how useful is this for a jailbreak? Well it's unfortunate but Jake James made an analysis in here and he posted quote after one day of looking into this I can't think of any viable exploitation method. There are a lot of limitations on this. What the POC or proof of concept achieves is sending a message to a dangling port. Here are the issues with this in the next tweet. And he says that the port has no receiver so the message won't send successfully if we manage to reallock in time. And any Anyway, the device will panic due to the lack of the IP receiver and whatever we reallocate the port with, nothing useful will happen if it doesn't have the IO active and a valid lock. So he basically says in here that he kind of doubts there is anything useful that can be done with it in these conditions for the moment. Now of course Jake James is just one developer, there might be somebody else who can possibly find a way to use this in a very interesting way, but this is not a TFP0 kernel exploit even though it's a kernel bug, it's not even an exploit, it's just a bug and a proof of concept trigger so this cannot be used the way it is for a jailbreak even if it was exploitable because this is just a bug this code in here is not an exploit it's just a trigger for the bug so that basically he proves a point proves the fact that there is indeed a bug in the apple jpeg driver user client so even if this turns out to be useful for a jailbreak for uncover or anything in any ways we still need an exploit for it and according to jake james that may not happen because there doesn't seem to be any viable exploitation method for the moment ios 13.5 4 is signed but iOS 13.3.1 is also signed. I would definitely recommend it to stay on 13.3.1 even if this bug isn't exactly very useful. There might be other bugs in the future. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out our Jailbreak Central forum for the latest jailbreak news and of course if you have any jailbreak questions I am Geosnow and till the next time peace out.